Hello, love. Welcome to the Really United States video blog. And I'm your host, the Dread Pirate Pablo. And we're here on the banks of the Saginaw River, just south of Saginaw Bay, in the city of Bay City. When it comes to naming things, we're not a terribly imaginative lot, are we? Well, anyway, we're here for the 2013 Tall Ship Celebration. Now, the Tall Ship Celebration is an annual tour of reconstructed ships from the early part of the American history. 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century ships. Largely 18th and 19th century in this particular case. There are 10 ships in the, in the fleet this year. And behind me, in the yellow boat, is the brig Niagara, and it is the flagship of the fleet, whence the large American ensign flying from the start. Niagara was a integral part of American history in that it played a key role in the Battle of Lake Erie during our Second War for Independence, the War of 1812. Uh, and there was, in fact, two wars for independence here in the United States. For those of you from other parts of the world, I'm sure my British colleagues and friends are well aware of this. But uh, the Niagara was taken in command of by Admiral Perry, Commodore Perry. And Commodore Perry, within 15 minutes of taking command of the Niagara, turned the tide of the battle and won the Battle of Lake Erie opening the trade route to what was called the Northwest Territories at the time, up through the St. Lawrence Seaway and the Great Lakes, opening up trade with, for agriculture and industry both. And well into the late 19th and even early 20th century, these ships would be used for cargo. Such things as iron ore that came down from Duluth, Minnesota, or agricultural products that came from all over Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and parts of Canada. Also used heavy in the fur trade that was popular during that era. The ship behind the Niagara is a three-masted barkentine. And a barkentine is, in fact, again, a, a three-masted vessel and Actually, it's two ships behind because right behind it is a, is a scooter. But a barkentine is the white ship over my right shoulder. And it has a main mast in the middle, a foremast in the front, and the mizzen mast in the back. This would have probably been a cargo ship for carrying goods, materials, and even people hundreds of miles from the eastern seaboard up around New Brunswick and Maine up over that area down the St. Lawrence Seaway into the Great Lakes. Would have also been integral in carrying lumber from this area back towards the eastern seaboard. Iron ore, perhaps, from the Iron Range in northern Michigan down to Pennsylvania coastline off of Lake Ontario. Niagara was built in 1813. Now this is a reconstruction, but this particular ship does in fact employ some of the original timbers used in the original Niagara that was built in 1813. And tall ships are called tall ships because they are, well, tall. And they were immortalized a hundred years after that ship was built in 1913 when British poet laureate John Mansfield uh, published what is now a very famous poem a hundred years later in 2013 called Sea Fever. Sea Fever is often quoted in many films and television shows here in the United States. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking, and a gray mist on the sea's face, and a gray dawn breaking.
some of you may be wondering how these boats get up this river, which is actually a northerly flowing river. And this modern day age, with obviously highways running over this, well, in fact, this river has a series of what are called Baskill Bridges. And the Baskill Bridge, often mistakenly referred to as a drawbridge, is a mechanical or hydraulic bridge that opens in the middle. You can see hidden one here at the next road to allow sailboats to pass through. Now you can see there is a sailboat there actually in front of the bridge, between us and the bridge, that is waiting at station for the bridge master to open. And depending on the bridge, sometimes they're done on a schedule and sometimes you would call on the radio and they will open the bridge for you on, on request. Uh, on a busy day, today is a Sunday, they're probably doing it on a schedule and waiting until more than one boat backs up uh, to, to open. But this is a Baskill bridge. And uh, they're relatively common here in the United States. And there is the station keeping house of the bridge master. And uh, I want to tell you, these are rather frightening sometimes, depending on uh, how old or how narrow they are to, to navigate. I've actually had to navigate through these with a reasonably large sailboat, and it can be a, a frightening experience. But that is a typical Baskill Bridge used in the United States and many other parts of the world too, but they're quite common here. I'd like to give a special shout out that made this episode possible. Uh, we were not aware of this. This is about 100 miles from our home. And we were made aware of this by one of our loyal viewers and followers on Facebook, Vlad Tartarly, down in Lake Orion, which is about 100 miles south of here. So, Vlad, I'd like to say, Zastutia, Ondrivyet. And thank you very much for letting us know about this so that we could uh, share this with everyone around the world. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Real United States video blog. We'd like to thank you for joining us. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. We'd be happy to get back with you as soon as we can. Uh, if you haven't already, we invite you to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. You're mad. Bloody good thing for that, otherwise this would never work.